with all the digital art, it's making me question the value of my art. Maybe that's not the right, like that's extreme, okay? Like what I'm saying is just, it's making me confused kind of on how to price my art because it's just weird when you're given four figures for a JPEG, okay, for just like a digital image to use to be blown up on something or a vinyl, a panel or whatever, and then to have like four figures for the original in itself where it's just like one of a kind, like there's no, there's nothing else like this on the planet, you know? And I feel like, I don't know. I just feel, I just feel as if people don't value art anymore. If that's the right way to say it, I don't know. So me and Andy was talking about it and I was like, babe, like when was the last time you bought an album? Like when is it like even even for your favorite artist and I'm thinking to myself like man it's been years since I've actually bought an album and that's why it blows my mind when people be talking about like oh this artist only sold five thousand copies or ten thousand copies their their first week out on the charts or something and I'm just like but who's actually buying out like a girl I'm streaming it on Spotify like I'm not purchasing a CD. Like, what are we doing? You know, like, what are we even talking about? Like, why is that even a measurement? You know, but then now granted, we do collect vinyl. So we got the Kendrick's damn album on vinyl. I actually did, per. that's funny. I actually did purchase Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, the cassette. So like Kendrick did this sort of like limited edition bundle thing, like where you got the t-shirt, you got the box with his album art printed on it. And there's a cassette that's in it. So it's, it's like, I don't even got a cassette player, okay? <laughs> but like, I just I just thought it was a dope idea. Like I wanted the box. I wanted the sort of collector item experience. And, I, and so I think maybe we are valuing art and like maybe we are purchasing art, but we are doing it if it's sort of packaged in a way where it's an experience because when it comes down to how we're listening to music or how we're streaming uh, movies or videos, yeah it's like we aren't out here paying for this stuff and what made me think about it was the writers guild they're they're going on strike and then the youtube channel vox did a really good documentation of it where they were covering like what's going on with the strike all the logistics i highly recommend y'all watch that because that'll give you like hella context for the stuff that's going on you know um and so part of it was like the writers aren't like pretty much, I guess the seasons are getting shorter. The time in the writer rooms is getting shorter. They aren't a part of the production process. So their work calendar has significantly shrunk. So in turn, their income has significantly decreased. So now instead of just working on one show and being able to sustain their family, they have to be working on like multiple shows at a time so that they can get a consistent income to be able to live and work in New York or LA cities which are extremely expensive and so I think to myself like okay first of all as somebody who is an artist for somebody who values art and appreciates art and knows how much time and energy can go into art I think to myself like okay when's the last time you like bought a DVD (laughs) you know like when's the last time you actually now the thing is I do pay for streaming services I pay I have YouTube premium where I don't get the ads I pay for Spotify where I don't get ads I pay for a lot of different subscription stuff you know and so but when you hear from the artists on these different platforms it's like they aren't being paid sustainably in order to in order to maintain their careers like even with Spotify um, I think that's why a lot of music artists were, you know, going on strike with them or the whole thing with NDRE and Joe Rogan and stuff. So, yeah, I just feel like they're being paid like 0.01 cent per stream, you know. And so then it goes back to the idea of, OK, so now do artists have to become content creators? You know, so it's like for them to even get the money for the stuff that they doing. Now they have to have ads running on their YouTube videos, their music, their whatever. And so then the other part of me was thinking like, what if ads didn't exist? Like what if capitalism didn't exist? What if marketing and pro and promotion and ads didn't exist? I think kind of like Cuba, right? Like they don't have billboards and ads and, or, and whatever. And so it's like, if everybody, you know, even with YouTube, if everybody has a sponsor, if they're not even getting 
paid enough from the YouTube AdSense itself and now they have to have sponsors. I don't know. But then I think back to myself like, well, at the end of the day, all this stuff has been really paid by sponsors and advertising. You know, even with like commercials that were on shows and movies and production houses, they had sponsors. Like, I guess everybody has been sponsored by somebody, but maybe it's just more in our awareness now, our collective consciousness now, as we're all sort of content creators. And and of course we aren't, right? Like everybody's not YouTube. Everybody's not sharing on Instagram, whatever. But the other thought that came to me was, man, so you kind of have to though, to put your work out there. So it's like, if you don't like social media and if you don't like you know, if you don't feel comfortable on camera, if you like, there's just so many. Okay, here's the thing. There's so few barriers now, but there's also so many barriers emotionally and from a personality perspective. Like if you don't like being on camera and entertaining people and posting on social and sharing your art and like, you know, doing stuff on TikTok, then it's like, So what is the alternative? Now, I think I'm just, I feel like we're just losing alternatives. And then I also think it's almost a little bit confusing to the consumer because people are like, yeah, no, I'm not about to buy your album. First of all, I only like four tracks (laughs) on the album. So I'm just about to stream it like this. And so when we're given people choices which I well first of all I think choices are great okay I'm not saying like oh let's cancel the no I think choices are great and I'm glad that I am able to consume an album and more of a like a a la carte style I'm able to like you know just really dive deep into the songs that I like or to binge a show that I like and not have to watch everything else involved but I think it just really gave me perspective for the writers guild strike like yeah, we're given all this sort of convenience and versatility, but at what cost? And how does that change consumer behavior? How does that change collector's behaviors? You know, even I just think about, you know, with me being on YouTube, there's YouTube was doing this was like, you know, they've been pushing YouTube shorts and stuff. And so they went on a campaign where they were like paying creators to make YouTube shorts. So I did a sponsorship and I didn't even post it on my page. YouTube was like, literally, you don't got to post it on your page. Just make it. We'll post it on our, on our YouTube, on our YouTube channel thing, you know. So I was like, okay, great. So they paid me four figures to make a 15 second video. And I painted like this small paint, like a little six inch painting. Okay. And then I later sold the painting for three figures. Okay. I sold the painting for like $600 or something. It was like a little small painting, but the 15 second video of that painting, of me making the painting, not even other paintings that there was like, we don't don't even want the painting. We just want the video of you making the painting. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like this, it's it's honestly becoming a mind fuck. It's becoming a mind fuck. I just, can I just be honest? Like, can I just tell you like just how as an artist, this is weird and this is like, it's just confusing man like I'm just like it's just this is crazy I just don't know how to feel about this I honestly don't why are you yelling like stop yelling just lower your voice I just lower your voice yeah y'all I'm just like you just honestly gotta embrace what is and so instead of spending energy worried about how it should be or how it used to be really just embracing what is and so but I also can acknowledge the fact when what is is uncomfortable you know and this honestly has been uncomfortable it's been uncomfortable experiencing this transition in the art world at the end of the day I always express gratitude like I'm, I'm grateful for my people I'm grateful for my collectors you know I'm, I'm really grateful for the people in my world and circle who value my art you know it's also it's also just weird y'all it's just like weird out here and at the same time I try to look at both sides of everything so there's also kind of like a lot of freedom in that where as an artist I don't have to paint something per se that people will like or want to buy or have to do this sort of commercial work that's super you know I don't know sort of like wall art type stuff which first of all if if I if I want to paint that I'm gonna paint that period because I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do you know but it's also just like 
if I want to experiment with an idea or do something unique or different, then I can do that, you know, and I also don't have to sell the pa- the painting. I also don't have to sell the work. Like I can I can hold on to the piece. I can gift it to a friend. I can yeah, I don't know, but it's all, it's just it's just weird. And you know, the whole NFT world and stuff and like the crypto world and like AI art and I'm just trying to figure out where I fit in. Like where I, where does traditional art fit in in this sort of digital landscape? And is now my quote unquote product, the video instead of the painting itself, you know, and I don't know. I don't know. And then, okay. And so if that is the truth, how do I feel about that? And I feel, I mean, it, the positive is that I can monetize just my process. You know, I can make money from the video that I'm making I can keep the original if I want I can sell the original I can make prints of it like now I can bifurcate this one painting into so many different streams of income but then it also just I don't know it also makes me feel like well man like do you even care about the painting like do you even care about what I made you know like I mean at the end of the day we kind of do like as art especially if you sharing sharing your work now granted if like if you are artist at home and you're a hobbyist and you're not sharing it with the world then like clearly you like oh it don't care I'm just doing this for me I'm just like vibing out now of course I am doing this for me but there is another level of public conversation that I have with my work by sharing it with the world so there is a level of you know, appreciation and respect and admiration that I do want for for my work. And I feel like if I don't acknowledge that, I will be lying to myself, you know? And I also know that there's nothing wrong with that. So I've embraced that, sure. By sharing my work publicly, there is a level of energy exchange that I do want to have with the outside world with it, you know? So the sort of negative side of it makes me feel like, man, does the world even value my art? Does it even care about what I'm actually painting or do they care about the sort of video that I'm making about or the content that I'm making and like how quick and short and and poppy and like color I mean sure colorful I guess that's the painting itself but it's like do you care about the meaning behind it the message behind it I don't know and I think that's also I think maybe that is space for me to practice detachment and for me to be like you know what once I put this out into the world I can't control what happens with this piece of work all I can control is what I do and yeah if if somebody doesn't like it they don't like it and I need to be okay with that and at the same time if somebody doesn't really care about the painting but you also still able to you know live your life and earn income from the video you made about it then like sure great have at it you know like why not you know but I just it's just two sides to it and I'm trying to just wrap my brain around how I feel about it and you know and free free my mind and maybe in hopes like even in sharing this conversation like free an other artist's mind because I follow the other artist Kelsey Rodriguez and she talks about how like you know people be saying like show your art she doesn't show her art enough or like oh it's only about business or whatever and so she did start a second vlog channel where she was sharing more of her art but even when she shares her art on her main page like people aren't really people don't really watch it you know and now that's a different story like I think artists also need to understand that like YouTube is an algorithm and so if you had a hundred thousand views on an art business video and then you drop a art vlog and it only gets 10,000 views that's not because your viewers don't want to see your art it's literally just that the out that the YouTube algorithm hasn't pushed that video in front of people because the one that 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 the YouTube algorithm thinks they like based on their views and engagement is the art business video you know and so I think the other aspect of it as artists is that maybe we can take things less personally I know for me I'm trying to I'm trying to not get all in my feelings about everything. You know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to create while still acknowledging my feelings though. Like I don't want to push them down or be like, oh, I'm fine with all this sort of, you know, digital. Like, oh, I'm fine for if they want to pay me this for a 15 second video, but don't even care about the painting. Like, no, nah, no, nah, 
I feel some kind of, some kind of way. You know what I mean? And I think I can be honest with myself about that and I don't need to push down those feelings, but I'm just like, man, what does the future hold with all of this? You know? I think what is nice about the sort of digital aspect, like being paid for the digital content of the fine art you're making is that since it does take me a long time to create a big piece, it's like I can still be earning money. Like I don't have to wait. I don't have to like rush my process or hurry up and finish this painting because I need to hurry up and sell it so I can get some money. It's like, no, nah, I can actually take my time in making this video. And I can, I mean, in, in, look, video, look at me merging. To, see, like this is the thing. Okay, but I can take my time in making the painting and then I can make like 15 videos from me making the painting, you know? And then I can still earn an income yeah, so I think it's definitely freedom in it and the other side of where it does make me feel some type of way, where it does just feel like, man, does the world even value the art itself? It's like, yeah, that's just that's just an emotional thing that I'm just going to have to get over. Like, honestly, you know, honestly, honestly, okay, like, for real, for it honestly is. And the minute you sort of like get over some of the, some of the like emotional stuff, now y'all know how I feel. I'm not you know you know we can acknowledge how we feel we can acknowledge our emotions but as somebody who is very um empathic and sensitive and and emotional what has helped me in this life is to is to realize that my emotions isn't gonna change anything (laughs) like it's not gonna change the now sure like when it comes down to how I feel granted but I'm saying it's not about to change anything in the real world, okay? It's like, just because I don't like TikTok don't mean that TikTok about to go away, you know? Sure, we can hope that it gets banned. <laughs> like, I gotta, I gotta want the bitch to get banned as Adrian, but whatever. It's like, yeah, you can feel all you feel at, at the end of the day, but yeah, like, get over it. Because how, how you feel is not gonna change the fact that that TikTok is still out here and that AI art is still out here and that you know like it's still it's still going to be what it's going to be and so you can either embrace it for what it is and just you know embrace it or you can resist and anything I mean my whole thing is just like stay flexible you know if you could be in rigid and not being flexible in the world yeah you just gonna break you know like any sort of rigid tree branch it breaks in the wind, but if, if you stay flexible and malleable, so I'm trying to stay flexible while still giving my inner child room to acknowledge that this is irritating, <laughs> okay, that, that this is frustrating, this is confusing, this is, it feels so, uh, the first word that honestly came to mind was dystopian, honestly, like if I'm, if I'm just speaking how I genuinely feel, it does feel dystopian, and I, but that's my reflex. And so I'm trying to make an effort. I'm trying to make a conscious effort to reframe my thinking around it. And 